Spain, or Kingdom of Spain, is a country in southwestern Europe with parts of territory in the Atlantic Ocean and across the Mediterranean Sea. The largest part of Spain is situated on the Iberian Peninsula, its territory also includes the Canary Islands in the Atlantic Ocean, the Balearic Islands in the Mediterranean Sea, the autonomous cities of Ceuta and Melilla, and several minor overseas territories also scattered along the Moroccan coast of the Albaran Sea. The country's mainland is bordered to the south by Gibraltar, to the south and east by the Mediterranean Sea, to the north by France, Andorra and the Bay of Biscay, and to the west by Portugal, and the Atlantic Ocean. With an area of 505,990 square kilometers, Spain is the largest country in southern Europe, the second largest country in Western Europe, and the European Union, and the fourth largest country by area on the European continent. With a population exceeding 47.4 million, Spain is the sixth most populous country in Europe, and the fourth most populous country in the European Union. Spain's capital and largest city is Madrid, other major urban areas include Barcelona, Valencia, Seville, Zaragoza, Malaga, Murcia, Palma de Mallorca, Las Palmas de Gran Canaria and Bilbao. Anatomically modern humans first arrived in the Iberian Peninsula around 42,000 years ago. The first cultures and peoples that developed in current Spanish territory were pre-Roman peoples such as the ancient Iberians, Celts, Celtiberians, Vascons, and Turditani. Later, foreign Mediterranean peoples such as the Phoenicians and ancient Greeks developed coastal trading colonies, and the Carthaginians briefly controlled part of the Spanish Mediterranean coastline. From the year 218 BCE, with the taking of the city of Ampurias, the Roman colonization of Hispania began and, with the exception of the Atlantic Cornus, they quickly controlled the territory of present-day Spain. The Romans had driven the Carthaginians out of the Iberian Peninsula by 206 BCE, and divided it into two administrative provinces, Hispania Ulterior and Hispania Citeria. The Romans laid the foundations for modern Spanish culture and identity, and was the birthplace of important Roman emperors such as Trajan, Hadrian or Theodosius I. Spain remained under Roman rule until the collapse of the Western Roman Empire in the 4th century, which ushered in Germanic tribal confederations from Central and Northern Europe. During this period, present-day Spain was divided between different Germanic powers, including the Suevi, Alans, Vandals, and Visigoths, the latter maintaining an alliance with Rome via Fides, while part of southern Spain belonged to the Byzantine Empire. Eventually, the Visigoths emerged as the dominant faction by the 5th century, with the Visigothic kingdom spanning the vast majority of the Iberian Peninsula, and established its capital in what is now the city of Toledo. The creation of the Code of Laws Liber Iadishorum by the King Requiswinth during the Visigothic period deeply influenced the structural and legal basis of Spain and the survival of Roman law after the fall of the Roman Empire. In the early 8th century, the Visigothic Kingdom was invaded by the Umaway Caliphate, ushering in over 700 years of Muslim rule in southern Iberia. During this period, Al-Andalus became a major economic and intellectual center, with the city of Cordoba being among the largest and richest in Europe. Several Christian kingdoms emerged in northern and central Iberia, chief among them Leon, Castile, Aragon, Portugal, and Navarre. Over the next seven centuries, an intermittent southward expansion of these kingdoms, metahistorically framed as a reconquest or reconquista, culminated with the Christian seizure of the last Muslim polity, the Nazarit Kingdom of Granada, and the control of all Iberia by the Christian kingdoms in 1492. That same year, Christopher Columbus arrived in the New World on behalf of the Catholic monarchs, whose dynastic union of the Crown of Castile and the Crown of Aragon is usually considered the emergent Spain as a unified country. During the centuries after the Reconquista, the Christian kings of Spain persecuted and expelled ethnic and religious minorities such as Jews and Muslims through the Spanish Inquisition. From the 16th until the early 19th century, Spain ruled one of the largest empires and it was among the first global empires in history. Spain is a developed country, 
a secular parliamentary democracy and a constitutional monarchy, with King Felipe VI as head of state. It is a high-income country and an advanced economy, with the world's 14th largest economy by nominal GDP and the 16th largest by PPP. Spain has one of the longest life expectancies in the world at 83.5 years in 2019. It ranks particularly high in healthcare quality, with its healthcare system considered to be one of the most efficient worldwide. It is a world leader in organ transplants and organ donation. Spain is a member of the United Nations, the European Union, the Eurozone, the Council of Europe, the Organization of Ibero-American States, the Union for the Mediterranean, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, the World Trade Organization and many other international organizations. Spanish art, music, literature and cuisine have been influential worldwide, particularly in Western Europe, and the Americas. As a reflection of its large cultural wealth, Spain has the world's fourth largest number of World Heritage Sites and is the world's second most visited country. Its cultural influence extends over 570 million Hispanophones, making Spanish the world's second most spoken native language. Chapter 1 Etymology. The origins of the Roman name Hispania, and the modern Hispania, are uncertain, although the Phoenicians and Carthaginians referred to the region as Spania, therefore the most widely accepted etymology is a Levant Phoenician one. There have been a number of accounts and hypotheses of its origin. The Renaissance scholar Antonio de Nebrija proposed that the word Hispania evolved from the Iberian word Hispalis, meaning city of the Western world. Jesus Luis Cancillos argued that the root of the term span is the Phoenician word spy, meaning to forge metals. Therefore, ISBN you would mean the land where metals are forged. It may be a derivation of the Phoenician Ispania, meaning island of rabbits, land of rabbits or edge, a reference to Spain's location at the end of the Mediterranean, Roman coins struck in the region from the reign of Hadrian show a female figure with a rabbit at her feet, and Strabo called it the land of the rabbits. The word in question actually means hyrax, possibly due to Phoenicians confusing the two animals. Hispania may derive from the poetic use of the term Hesperia, reflecting the Greek perception of Italy as a western land or land of the setting sun and Spain, being still further west, as Hesperia ultima. There is the claim that Hispania derives from the Basque word Espana meaning edge or border. Another reference to the fact that the Iberian Peninsula constitutes the southwest corner of the European continent. Two 15th century Spanish Jewish scholars, Don Isaac Abrovanel and Solomon Ibn Vega, gave an explanation now considered folkloric. Both men wrote in two different published works that the first Jews to reach Spain were brought by ship by Pharaohs, who was confederate with the king of Babylon when he laid siege to Jerusalem. Pharaohs was a Grecian by birth but who had been given a kingdom in Spain. Phyros became related by marriage to Espan, the nephew of King Heracles, who also ruled over a kingdom in Spain. Heracles later renounced his throne in preference for his native Greece, leaving his kingdom to his nephew, Espan, from whom the country of Espania took its name. Based upon their testimonies, this eponym, would have already been in use in Spain by circa 350 BC. Chapter 2 History Iberia enters written records as a land populated largely by the Iberians, Basques, and Celts. Early on, its coastal areas were settled by Phoenicians who founded Western Europe's most ancient cities, Cadiz and Malaga. Phoenician influence expanded as much of the peninsula was eventually incorporated into the Carthaginian Empire, becoming a major theatre of the Punic Wars against the expanding Roman Empire. After an arduous conquest, the peninsula came fully under Roman rule. During the early Middle Ages it came under Visigothic rule, and then much of it was conquered by Muslim invaders from North Africa. In a process that took centuries, the small Christian kingdoms in the north gradually regained control of the peninsula. The last Muslim state fell in 1492, the same year Columbus reached the Americas. 
A global empire began which saw Spain become the strongest kingdom in Europe, the leading world power for one and a half centuries, and the largest overseas empire for three centuries. Continued wars and other problems eventually led to a diminished status. The Napoleonic conflict in Spain led to chaos, triggering independence movements that tore apart most of the empire and left the country politically unstable. Spain suffered a devastating civil war in the 1930s and then came under the rule of an authoritarian government, which oversaw a period of stagnation that was followed by a surge in the growth of the economy. Eventually, democracy was restored in the form of a parliamentary constitutional monarchy. Spain joined the European Union, experiencing a cultural renaissance and steady economic growth until the beginning of the 21st century, that started a new globalized world with economic and ecological challenges. Chapter 2 Section 1 – Prehistory and Pre-Roman Peoples Archaeological research at Ataperca indicates the Iberian Peninsula was populated by hominids 1.2 million years ago. In Ataperca fossils have been found of the earliest known hominins in Europe, the Homo antecessor. Modern humans first arrived in Iberia, from the north on foot, about 35,000 years ago. The best known artifacts of these prehistoric human settlements are the famous paintings in the Altamira cave of Cantabria in northern Iberia, which were created from 35,600 to 13,500 BCE by Cro-Magnon. Archaeological and genetic evidence suggests that the Iberian Peninsula acted as one of several major refugia from which northern Europe, was repopulated following the end of the last Ice Age. The largest groups inhabiting the Iberian Peninsula before the Roman conquest were the Iberians and the Celts. The Iberians inhabited the Mediterranean side of the peninsula, from the northeast to the southeast. The Celts inhabited much of the inner and Atlantic sides of the peninsula, from the northwest to the southwest. Basques occupied the western area of the Pyrenees mountain range and adjacent areas, the Phoenician-influenced Tarchans culture flourished in the southwest and the Lusitanians and Vetones occupied areas in the central west. Several cities were founded along the coast by Phoenicians, and trading outposts and colonies were established by Greeks in the east. Eventually, Phoenician Carthaginians expanded inland towards the Meseta, however, due to the bellicose inland tribes, the Carthaginians got settled in the coasts of the Iberian Peninsula. Chapter 2 Section 2, Roman Hispania, and the Visigothic Kingdom During the Second Punic War, roughly between 210 and 205 BC the expanding Roman Republic captured Carthaginian trading colonies along the Mediterranean coast. Although it took the Romans nearly two centuries to complete the conquest of the Iberian Peninsula, they retained control of it for over six centuries. Roman rule was bound together by law, language, and the Roman road. The cultures of the Celtic and Iberian populations were gradually Romanized at different rates depending on what part of Hispania they lived in, with local leaders being admitted into the Roman aristocratic class. Hispania served as a granary for the Roman market, and its harbors exported gold, wool, olive oil, and wine. Agricultural production increased with the introduction of irrigation projects, some of which remain in use. Emperors Hadrian, Trajan, Theodosius I, and the philosopher Seneca were born in Hispania. Christianity was introduced into Hispania in the 1st century CE and it became popular in the cities in the 2nd century CE. Most of Spain's present languages and religion, and the basis of its laws, originate from this period. The weakening of the Western Roman Empire's jurisdiction in Hispania began in 409, when the Germanic Swabian Vandals, together with the Sarmatian Alans entered the peninsula at the invitation of a Roman usurper. These tribes had crossed the Rhine in early 407 and ravaged Gaul. The Swabi established a kingdom in what is today modern Galicia and northern Portugal whereas the Vandals established themselves in southern Spain by 420 before crossing over to North Africa in 429, and taking Carthage in 439. As the Western Empire disintegrated, the social and economic base became greatly simplified, 
but even in modified form, the successor regimes maintained many of the institutions and laws of the late empire, including Christianity and assimilation to the evolving Roman culture. The Byzantines established an occidental province, Spania, in the south, with the intention of reviving Roman rule throughout Iberia. Eventually, however, Hispania was reunited under Visigothic rule. These Visigoths, or Western Goths, after sacking Rome under the leadership of Alaric, turned towards the Iberian Peninsula, with Athulf for their leader, and occupied the northeastern portion. Wallia extended his rule over most of the peninsula, keeping the Suebians shut up in Galicia. Theodoric I took part, with the Romans and Franks, in the Battle of the Catalonian Plains, where Attila was rooted. Euric, who put an end to the last remnants of Roman power in the peninsula, may be considered the first monarch of Spain, though the Suebians still maintained their independence in Galicia. Euric was also the first king to give written laws to the Visigoths. In the following reigns the Catholic kings of France assumed the role of protectors of the Hispano-Roman Catholics against the Arianism of the Visigoths, and in the wars which ensued Alaric II and Amalaric lost their lives. Athanagild, having risen against King Agila, called in the Byzantines and, in payment for the succor they gave him, ceded to them the maritime places of the southeast. Uvigild restored the political unity of the peninsula, subduing the Suebians, but the religious divisions of the country, reaching even the royal family, brought on a civil war. Saint Hermengild, the king's son, putting himself at the head of the Catholics, was defeated and taken prisoner, and suffered martyrdom for rejecting communion with the Arians. Ricard, son of Uvigild and brother of Saint Hermengild, added religious unity to the political unity achieved by his father, accepting the Catholic faith in the Third Council of Toledo. The religious unity established by this council was the basis of that fusion of Goths with Hispano-Romans which produced the Spanish nation. Sisabut and soon Tila completed the expulsion of the Byzantines from Spain. Intermarriage between Visigoths and Hispano-Romans was prohibited, though in practice it could not be entirely prevented and was eventually legalized by Leuvigild. The Spanish Gothic scholars such as Braulio of Zaragoza and Isidore of Seville played an important role in keeping the classical Greek and Roman culture. Isidore was one of the most influential clerics and philosophers in the Middle Ages in Europe, and his theories were also vital to the conversion of the Visigothic kingdom from an Arian domain to a Catholic one in the councils of Toledo. Isidore created the first Western encyclopedia which had a huge impact during the Middle Ages. Chapter 2 Section 3 – Muslim Era and Reconquista In the 8th century, nearly all of the Iberian Peninsula was conquered by largely Moorish Muslim armies from North Africa. These conquests were part of the expansion of the Umaway Caliphate. Only a small area in the mountainous northwest of the peninsula managed to resist the initial invasion. Legend has it that Count Julian, the governor of Ceuta, invited the Muslims and opened to them the gates of the peninsula as revenge for the violation of his daughter, Florinda, by King Roderick. Under Islamic law, Christians and Jews were given the subordinate status of Dimi. This status permitted Christians and Jews to practice their religions as people of the book but they were required to pay a special tax and had legal and social rights inferior to those of Muslims. Conversion to Islam proceeded at an increasing pace. The Muladis are believed to have formed the majority of the population of Al-Andalus by the end of the 10th century. The Muslim community in the Iberian Peninsula was itself diverse and beset by social tensions. The Berber people of North Africa, who had provided the bulk of the invading armies, clashed with the Arab leadership from the Middle East. Over time, large Moorish populations became established, especially in the Guadalquivir River Valley, the coastal plain of Valencia, the Ebro River Valley, and in the mountainous region of Granada. Cordoba, the capital of the Caliphate since Obadar Rahman III, was the largest, richest and most sophisticated city in Western Europe. Mediterranean trade and cultural exchange flourished. Muslims imported a rich intellectual tradition from the Middle East and North Africa. Some important philosophers at the time were Averroes, 
Ibn Arabi, and Maimonides. The Romanized cultures of the Iberian Peninsula interacted with Muslim and Jewish cultures in complex ways, giving the region a distinctive culture. Outside the cities, where the vast majority lived, the land ownership system from Roman times remained largely intact as Muslim leaders rarely dispossessed landowners and the introduction of new crops and techniques led to an expansion of agriculture introducing new producers which originally came from Asia, or the former territories of the Roman Empire. In the 11th century, the Muslim holdings fractured into rival Tarfa states, allowing the small Christian states the opportunity to greatly enlarge their territories. The arrival from North Africa of the Islamic ruling sects of the Almoravids and the Almohads restored unity upon the Muslim holdings, with a stricter, less tolerant application of Islam, and saw a revival in Muslim fortunes. This reunited Islamic state experienced more than a century of successes that partially reversed Christian gains. The Reconquista was the centuries-long period in which Christian rule was re-established over the Iberian Peninsula. The Reconquista is viewed as beginning with the Battle of Corvardonga won by Don Pelayo in 722 and was concurrent with the period of Muslim rule on the Iberian Peninsula. The Christian army's victory over Muslim forces led to the creation of the Christian Kingdom of Asturias along the northwestern coastal mountains. Shortly after, in 739, Muslim forces were driven from Galicia, which was to eventually host one of medieval Europe's holiest sites, Santiago de Compostela, and was incorporated into the new Christian kingdom. The Vikings invaded Galicia in 844, but were heavily defeated by Ramiro I of Asturias at A Coruña. Many of the Vikings' casualties were caused by the Galician's ballistas, powerful torsion-powered projectile weapons that looked rather like giant crossbows. Seventy Viking ships were captured and burned. Vikings raided Galicia in 859, during the reign of Ordono I of Asturias. Ordono was at the moment engaged against his constant enemies the Moors, but a count of the province, Don Pedro, attacked the Vikings and defeated them. The Kingdom of Leon was the strongest Christian kingdom for centuries. In 1188, the first modern parliamentary session in Europe was held in Leon. The Kingdom of Castile, formed from Leonese territory, was its successor as strongest kingdom. The kings and the nobility fought for power and influence in this period. The example of the Roman emperors influenced the political objective of the crown, while the nobles benefited from feudalism. Muslim armies had also moved north of the Pyrenees but they were defeated by Frankish forces at the Battle of Poitiers, Francia and pushed out of the very southernmost region of France along the sea coast by the 760s. Later, Frankish forces established Christian counties on the southern side of the Pyrenees. These areas were to grow into the kingdoms of Navarre and Aragon. For several centuries, the fluctuating frontier between the Muslim and Christian controlled areas of Iberia was along the Ebro and Douro valleys. The Islamic transmission of the classics is among the main Islamic contributions to medieval Europe. The Castilian language, more commonly known as Spanish after becoming the national language and lingua franca of Spain, evolved from Vulgar Latin, as did other Romance languages of Spain like the Catalan, Asturian and Galician languages, as well as other Romance languages in Latin Europe. Basque, the only non-Romance language in Spain, continued evolving from early Basque to medieval. The Glossas Emelianenses hold a great value as one of the first written examples of Iberian romance. The breakup of Al Andalus into the competing Tarfa kingdoms helped the long embattled Iberian Christian kingdoms gain the initiative. The capture of the strategically central city of Toledo in 1085 marked a significant shift in the balance of power in favor of the Christian kingdoms. Following a great Muslim resurgence in the 12th century, the great Moorish strongholds in the south fell to Castile in the 13th century, Cordoba in 1236 and Seville in 1248. The county of Barcelona and the Kingdom of Aragon entered in a dynastic union, and gained territory and power in the Mediterranean. In 1229 Majorca was conquered, so was Valencia in 1238. 
In the 13th and 14th centuries, the Marinid dynasty of Morocco invaded and established some enclaves on the southern coast but failed in their attempt to re-establish North African rule in Iberia, and were soon driven out. From the mid-13th century, literature and philosophy started to flourish again in the Christian peninsula kingdoms, based on Roman and Gothic traditions. An important philosopher from this time is Ramon Lul. Abraham Crescus was a prominent Jewish cartographer. Roman law and its institutions were the model for the legislators. The King Alfonso X of Castile focused on strengthening this Roman and Gothic past, and also on linking the Iberian Christian kingdoms with the rest of medieval European Christendom. Alfonso worked for being elected Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire and published the Siete Pertidus Code. The Toledo School of Translators is the name that commonly describes the group of scholars who worked together in the city of Toledo during the 12th and 13th centuries, to translate many of the philosophical and scientific works from classical Arabic, ancient Greek, and ancient Hebrew. The 13th century also witnessed the Crown of Aragon, centered in Spain's northeast, expand its reach across islands in the Mediterranean, to Sicily and Naples. Around this time the universities of Palencia and Salamanca were established. The Black Death of 1348, and 1349 devastated Spain. The Catalans and Aragonese offered themselves to the Byzantine Emperor Andronicus II Paleologus to fight the Turks. Having conquered these, they turned their arms against the Byzantines, who treacherously slew their leaders, but for this treachery, the Spaniards, under Bernard of Rochefort and Berenguer of Entinca, exacted the terrible penalty celebrated in history as the Catalan vengeance and seized the Frankish Duchy of Athens. The royal line of Aragon became extinct with Martin the Humane, and the compromise of Casp gave the crown to the House of Trastamara, already reigning in Castile. As in the rest of Europe during the late Middle Ages, antisemitism greatly increased during the 14th century in the Christian kingdoms. There were mass killings in Aragon in the mid-14th century, and 12,000 Jews were killed in Toledo. In 1391, Christian mobs went from town to town throughout Castile and Aragon, killing an estimated 50,000 Jews. Women and children were sold as slaves to Muslims, and many synagogues were converted into churches. According to Hastai Crescus, about 70 Jewish communities were destroyed. Saint Vincent Ferrer converted innumerable Jews, among them the Yosua ben Yosef, who took the name of Hieronimo de Santa Fe and in his town converted many of his former coreligionists in the famous Disputation of Tortosa. This period saw a contrast in landowning characteristics between the western and northwestern territories in Andalusia, where the nobility and the religious orders succeeded into the creation of large latifundia entitled to them, whereas in the Kingdom of Granada, a crown auspiciated distribution of the land to medium and small farmers took place. After 781 years of Muslim presence in Spain, the last Nazarid Sultanate of Granada, a tributary state would finally surrender in 1492 to joint rulers Queen Isabella I of Castile and King Ferdinand II of Aragon, who would become known as the Catholic Monarchs. Chapter 2 Section 4 Spanish Empire In 1469, the crowns of the Christian kingdoms of Castile and Aragon were united by the marriage of their monarchs, Isabella I and Ferdinand II, respectively. 1478 commenced the completion of the conquest of the Canary Islands and in 1492, the combined forces of Castile and Aragon captured the Emirate of Granada from its last ruler Mohammed XII, ending the last remnant of a 781-year presence of Islamic rule in Iberia. That same year, Spain's Jews were ordered to convert to Catholicism or face expulsion from Spanish territories during the Spanish Inquisition. As many as 200,000 Jews were expelled from Spain. This was followed by expulsions in 1493 in Aragonese Sicily and Portugal in 1497. The Treaty of Granada guaranteed religious tolerance towards Muslims, for a few years before Islam was outlawed in 1502 in the Kingdom of Castile and 1527, in the Kingdom of Aragon, 
leading to Spain's Muslim population becoming nominally Christian Moriscos. A few decades after the Morisco Rebellion of Granada known as the War of the Alpujarras, a significant proportion of Spain's formerly Muslim population was expelled, settling primarily in North Africa. From 1609 to 1614, over 300,000 Moriscos were sent on ships to North Africa and other locations, and, of this figure, around 50,000 died resisting the expulsion, and 60,000 died on the journey. The year 1492 also marked the arrival of Christopher Columbus in the New World, during a voyage funded by Isabella. Columbus's first voyage crossed the Atlantic and reached the Caribbean islands, beginning the European exploration and conquest of the Americas, although Columbus remained convinced that he had reached the Orient. Large numbers of indigenous Americans died in battle against the Spaniards during the conquest while others died from various other causes. Some scholars consider the initial period of the Spanish conquest, from Columbus's first landing in the Bahamas until the middle of the 16th century, as marking the most egregious case of genocide in the history of mankind. The death toll may have reached some 70 million indigenous people in this period, as diseases such as smallpox, measles, influenza, and typhus, brought to the Americas by the conquest, decimated the pre-Columbian population. The Spanish colonization of the Americas started with the colonization of the Caribbean. It was followed by the conquest of powerful pre-Columbian polities in central Mexico and the Pacific coast of South America. Miscegenation was the rule between the native and the Spanish cultures and people. An expedition sponsored by the Spanish crown completed the first voyage around the world in human history the Magellan Elcano circumnavigation. The Tornaviae or return route from the Philippines to Mexico made possible the Manila Galleon trading route. The Spanish encountered Islam in Southeast Asia and in order to incorporate the Philippines, Spanish expeditions organized from newly Christianized Mexico had invaded the Philippine territories of the Sultanate of Brunei. The Spanish used the conflict between pagan and Muslim Philippine kingdoms to pit them against each other thus using the divide and conquer principle. The Spanish considered the war with the Muslims of Brunei and the Philippines, a repeat of the Reconquista. A centralization of royal power ensued in the early modern period at the expense of local nobility, and the word Espana, whose root is the ancient name Hispania, began to be commonly used, to designate the whole of the two kingdoms. With their wide-ranging political, legal, religious and military reforms, the Hispanic monarchy merged as a world power. The unification of the crowns of Aragon and Castile by the marriage of their sovereigns laid the basis for modern Spain and the Spanish Empire, although each kingdom of Spain remained a separate country socially, politically, legally, and in currency and language. Two big revolts broke out during the early reign of the Habsburg Emperor, Charles V the revolt of the Comuneros in the crown of Castile and revolt of the Brotherhoods in the crown of Aragon. Habsburg Spain was one of the leading world powers throughout the 16th century and most of the 17th century, a position reinforced by trade and wealth from colonial possessions and became the world's leading maritime power. It reached its apogee during the reigns of the first two Spanish Habsburgs, Charles V-I and Philip II. This period saw the Italian Wars, the Schmalkaldic War, the Dutch Revolt, the War of the Portuguese Succession, clashes with the Ottomans, intervention in the French Wars of Religion, and the Anglo-Spanish War. Through exploration and conquest or royal marriage alliances and inheritance, the Spanish Empire expanded to include vast areas in the Americas islands in the Asia-Pacific area, areas of Italy, cities in northern Africa, as well as parts of what are now France, Germany, Belgium, Luxembourg, and the Netherlands. The first circumnavigation of the world was carried out in 1519-1521. It was the first empire on which it was said that the sun never set. This was an age of discovery, with daring explorations by sea and by land, the opening up of new trade routes across oceans, conquests and the beginnings of European colonialism. Spanish explorers brought back precious metals, spices, luxuries, and previously unknown plants, and played a leading part in transforming the European understanding of the globe. 
The cultural efflorescence witnessed during this period is now referred to as the Spanish Golden Age. The expansion of the empire caused immense upheaval in the Americas as the collapse of societies and empires and new diseases from Europe devastated American indigenous populations. The rise of humanism, the Counter-Reformation and new geographical discoveries and conquests raised issues that were addressed by the intellectual movement now known as the School of Salamanca, which developed the first modern theories of what are now known as international law and human rights. Juan Luis Vaves was another prominent humanist during this period. Spain's 16th-century maritime supremacy was demonstrated by the victory over the Ottomans at Lepanto in 1571, and then after the setback of the Spanish Armada in 1588, in a series of victories against England in the Anglo-Spanish War of 1585-1604. However, during the middle decades of the 17th century Spain's maritime power went into a long decline with mounting defeats against the United Provinces and then England, that by the 1660s it was struggling grimly to defend its overseas possessions from pirates and privateers. The Protestant Reformation dragged the kingdom ever more deeply into the mire of religiously charged wars. The result was a country forced into ever-expanding military efforts across Europe and in the Mediterranean. By the middle decades of a war and plague-ridden 17th century Europe, the Spanish Habsburgs had enmeshed the country in continent-wide religious political conflicts. These conflicts drained it of resources and undermined the economy generally. Spain managed to hold on to most of the scattered Habsburg Empire, and help the imperial forces of the Holy Roman Empire reverse a large part of the advances made by Protestant forces, but it was finally forced to recognize the separation of Portugal and the United Provinces, and eventually suffered some serious military reverses to France in the latter stages of the immensely destructive, Europe-wide Thirty Years' War. In the latter half of the 17th century, Spain went into a gradual decline, during which it surrendered several small territories to France and England, however, it maintained and enlarged its vast overseas empire, which remained intact until the beginning of the 19th century. The decline culminated in a controversy over succession to the throne which consumed the first years of the 18th century. The War of the Spanish Succession was a wide-ranging international conflict combined with a civil war, and was to cost the kingdom its European possessions and its position as one of the leading powers on the continent. During this war, a new dynasty originating in France, the Bourbons, was installed. Long united only by the crown, a true Spanish state was established when the first Bourbon king, Philip V, united the crowns of Castile and Aragon into a single state, abolishing many of the old regional privileges and laws. The 18th century saw a gradual recovery and an increase in prosperity through much of the empire. The new Bourbon monarchy drew on the French system of modernizing the administration and the economy. Enlightenment ideas began to gain ground among some of the kingdom's elite and monarchy. Bourbon reformers created formal disciplined militias across the Atlantic. Spain needed every hand it could take during the seemingly endless wars of the 18th century, the Spanish War of Succession or Queen Anne's War, the War of Jenkins' Ear which became the War of the Austrian Succession, the Seven Years' War and the Anglo-Spanish War and its new disciplined militias served around the Atlantic as needed. Chapter 2 Section 5 liberalism and nation-state. In 1793, Spain went to war against the revolutionary New French Republic as a member of the First Coalition. The subsequent war of the Pyrenees polarized the country in a reaction against the Gallicized elites and following defeat in the field, peace was made with France in 1795 at the Peace of Basel in which Spain lost control over two-thirds of the island of Hispaniola. The Prime Minister, Manuel Godoy, then ensured that Spain allied herself with France in the brief war of the Third Coalition which ended with the British naval victory at the Battle of Trafalgar in 1805. In 1807, a secret treaty between Napoleon and the unpopular Prime Minister led to a new declaration of war against Britain and Portugal. Napoleon's troops entered the country to invade Portugal but instead occupied Spain's major fortresses. The Spanish king abdicated in favor of Napoleon's brother, Joseph Bonaparte. 
Joseph Bonaparte was seen as a puppet monarch and was regarded with scorn by the Spanish. The 2nd of May 1808 revolt was one of many nationalist uprisings across the country against the Bonapartist regime. These revolts marked the beginning of a devastating war of independence against the Napoleonic regime. The most celebrated battles of this war were those of Brook, in the highlands of Montserrat, in which the Catalan peasantry routed a French army, Bailen, where Castaños, at the head of the army of Andalusia, defeated Dupont, and the sieges of Zaragoza and Girona, which were worthy of the ancient Spaniards of Sagentum and Nmantia. Napoleon was forced to intervene personally, defeating several Spanish armies and forcing a British army to retreat. However, further military action by Spanish armies, guerrillas and Wellington's British-Portuguese forces, combined with Napoleon's disastrous invasion of Russia, led to the ousting of the French imperial armies from Spain in 1814, and the return of King Ferdinand VII. During the war, in 1810, a revolutionary body, the Cortes of Cadiz, was assembled to coordinate the effort against the Bonapartist regime and to prepare a constitution. It met as one body, and its members represented the entire Spanish Empire. In 1812, a constitution for universal representation under a constitutional monarchy was declared, but after the fall of the Bonapartist regime, Ferdinand VII dismissed the Cortes Generales, and was determined to rule as an absolute monarch. These events foreshadowed the conflict between conservatives and liberals in the 19th and early 20th centuries. Spain's conquest by France benefited Latin American anti-colonialists who resented the imperial Spanish government's policies that favored Spanish-born citizens over those born overseas and demanded retroversion of the sovereignty to the people. Starting in 1809 Spain's American colonies began a series of revolutions and declared independence, leading to the Spanish-American Wars of Independence that ended Spanish control over its mainland colonies in the Americas. King Ferdinand VII's attempt to reassert control proved futile as he faced opposition not only in the colonies but also in Spain and army revolts followed, led by liberal officers. By the end of 1826, the only American colonies Spain held were Cuba and Puerto Rico. The Napoleonic War left Spain economically ruined, deeply divided and politically unstable. In the 1830s and 1840s, Carlism, fought against the Cristinos or Isabelinos in the Carlist Wars. Isabeline forces prevailed, but the conflict between progressives and moderates ended in a weak early constitutional period. After the glorious revolution of 1868 and the short-lived First Spanish Republic, the latter yielded to a stable monarchic period, the Restoration, a rigid bipartisan regime fueled up by the Turnismo, and the form of political representation of the countryside known as Quizmo. In the late 19th century nationalist movements arose in the Philippines and Cuba. In 1895 and 1896 the Cuban War of Independence and the Philippine Revolution broke out and eventually the United States became involved. The Spanish-American War was fought in the spring of 1898, and resulted in Spain losing the last of its once vast colonial empire outside of North Africa. El Desastre, as the war became known in Spain, gave added impetus to the generation of 98 who were analyzing the country. Although the period around the turn of the century was one of increasing prosperity, the 20th century brought little social peace, Spain played a minor part in the scramble for Africa, with the colonization of Western Sahara, Spanish Morocco, and Equatorial Guinea. It remained neutral during World War I. The heavy losses suffered during the Rif War in Morocco brought discredit to the government and undermined the monarchy. Industrialization, the development of railways and incipient capitalism developed in several areas of the country, particularly in Barcelona, as well as labor movement and socialist and anarchist ideas. The 1888 Barcelona Universal Exposition, and the 1870 Barcelona Labour Congress are good examples of this. In 1879, the Spanish Socialist Workers' Party was founded. A trade union linked to this party, Union General de Trobadores, was founded in 1888. In the anarcho-syndicalist trend of the labour movement in Spain, 
Confederación Nacional del Trabajo was founded in 1910 and Federación Anarquista Ibérica in 1927. Catalanism and Vasquism, alongside other nationalisms and regionalisms in Spain, arose in that period, being the Basque Nationalist Party formed in 1895 and Regionalist League of Catalonia in 1901. Political corruption and repression weakened the democratic system of the constitutional monarchy of a two-party system. The tragic weak events and repression examples the social instability of the time. The La Conadiense strike in 1919 led to the first law limiting the working day to eight hours. After a period of dictatorship, during the governments of Generals Miguel Primo de Rivera and Damaso Berenguer and Admiral Osnar Cabanas, the first elections since 1923, largely understood as a plebiscite on monarchy, took place, the 12th of April 1931 municipal elections. These gave a resounding victory to the Republican Socialist candidacies in large cities and provincial capitals, with a majority of monarchist councillors in rural areas. The king left the country and the proclamation of the Republic on 14 April ensued, with the formation of a provisional government. A constitution for the country was passed in October 1931 following the June 1931 constituent general election, and a series of cabinets presided by Manuel Azana supported by Republican parties and the so followed. In the election held in 1933 the right triumphed and in 1936, the left. During the Second Republic there was a great political and social upheaval, marked by a sharp radicalization of the left and the right. The violent acts during this period included the burning of churches, the 1932 failed coup d'état led by José Sanjojo, the revolution of 1934 and numerous attacks against rival political leaders. On the other hand, it is also during the Second Republic when important reforms to modernize the country were initiated, a democratic constitution, agrarian reform, restructuring of the army, political decentralization and women's right to vote. Chapter 2 Section 6, Civil War and Francoist Dictatorship The Spanish Civil War broke out in 1936, on 17 and 18 July, part of the military carried out a coup d'état that triumphed in only part of the country. The situation led to a civil war, in which the territory was divided into two zones, one under the authority of the Republican government, that counted on outside support from the Soviet Union and Mexico, and the other controlled by the Putschists, most critically supported by Nazi Germany and Fascist Italy. The Republic was not supported by the Western powers due to the British-led policy of non-intervention. General Francisco Franco was sworn in as the supreme leader of the rebels on 1 October 1936. An uneasy relationship between the Republican government and the grassroots anarchists who had initiated a partial social revolution also ensued. The civil war was viciously fought and there were many atrocities committed by all sides. The war claimed the lives of over 500,000 people and caused the flight of up to a half million citizens from the country. On 1 April 1939, five months before the beginning of World War II, the rebel side led by Franco emerged victorious, imposing a dictatorship over the whole country. The regime remained chiefly neutral from a nominal standpoint in the Second World War, although it was sympathetic to the Axis and provided the Nazi Wehrmacht with Spanish volunteers in the Eastern Front. The only legal party under Franco's dictatorship was the Filonga Española Tradicionalista y de las Jones, formed in 1937 upon the merging of the fascist Filonga Española de las Jones and the Carlist Traditionalists and to which the rest of right-wing groups, supporting the rebels also added. The name of Movimiento Nacional, sometimes understood as a wider structure than the Fet y de las Johns proper, largely imposed over the later's name in official documents along the 1950s. After World War II Spain was politically and economically isolated, and was kept out of the United Nations. This changed in 1955, during the Cold War period, when it became strategically important for the U.S. to establish a military presence on the Iberian Peninsula as a counter to any possible move by the Soviet Union into the Mediterranean Basin. In the 1960s, Spain registered an unprecedented rate of economic growth which was propelled by industrialization, 
a mass internal migration from rural areas to Madrid, Barcelona and the Basque Country, and the creation of a mass tourism industry. Franco's rule was also characterized by authoritarianism, promotion of a unitary national identity, national Catholicism, and discriminatory language policies. On 17 January 1966, a fatal collision occurred between a B-52G and a KC-135 Stratotanker over Polymaris. The conventional explosives in two of the Mk-28 type hydrogen bombs detonated upon impact with the ground, dispersing plutonium over nearby farms. Chapter 2 Section 7 – Restoration of Democracy In 1962, a group of politicians involved in the opposition to Franco's regime inside the country and in exile met in the Congress of the European Movement in Munich, where they made a resolution in favor of democracy. With Franco's death in November 1975, Juan Carlos succeeded to the position of King of Spain and head of state in accordance with the Franquist law. With the approval of the new Spanish Constitution of 1978, and the restoration of democracy, the state devolved much authority to the regions and created an internal organization based on autonomous communities. The Spanish 1977 amnesty law let people of Franco's regime continue inside institutions without consequences, even perpetrators of some crimes during transition to democracy like the massacre of 3 March 1976 in Vitoria or 1977 massacre of Atocha. In the Basque country, Moderate Basque nationalism coexisted with a radical nationalist movement led by the armed organization ETA, until the latter's dissolution in May 2018. The group was formed in 1959 during Franco's rule but had continued to wage its violent campaign even after the restoration of democracy and the return of a large measure of regional autonomy. On 23 February 1981, rebel elements among the security forces, seized the Cortes in an attempt to impose a military-backed government. King Juan Carlos took personal command of the military and successfully ordered the coup plotters, via national television, to surrender. During the 1980s the democratic restoration made possible a growing open society. New cultural movements based on freedom appeared, like La Movida Madrileña and a culture of human rights arose with Gregorio Peses Barba. On 30 May 1982 Spain joined NATO, followed by a referendum after a strong social opposition. That year the Spanish Socialist Workers' Party came to power, the first left-wing government in 43 years. In 1986 Spain joined the European Economic Community, which later became the European Union. The SO was replaced in government by the Partido Popular in 1996 after scandals around participation of the government of Felipe González in the dirty war against ETA, at that point the SO had served almost 14 consecutive years in office. On 1 January 2002, Spain fully adopted the euro, and Spain experienced strong economic growth, well above the EU average during the early 2000s. However, well publicized concerns issued by many economic commentators at the height of the boom warned that extraordinary property prices and a high foreign trade deficit were likely to lead to a painful economic collapse. In 2000, and two, the prestige oil spill occurred with big ecological consequences along Spain's Atlantic coastline. In 2003, Jose Maria Osnar supported U.S. President George W. Bush in the Iraq War and a strong movement against war rose in Spanish society. On the 11th of March 2004 a local Islamist terrorist group inspired by Al-Qaeda carried out the largest terrorist attack in Spanish history when they killed 191 people and wounded more than 1,800 others by bombing commuter trains in Madrid. Though initial suspicions focused on the Basque terrorist group ETA, evidence soon emerged indicating Islamist involvement. Because of the proximity of the 2004 election, the issue of responsibility quickly became a political controversy, with the main competing parties PP, and so exchanging accusations over the handling of the incident. The elections on 14 March were won by the SO, led by José Luis Rodríguez Zapatero. The proportion of Spain's foreign-born population increased rapidly during its economic boom in the early 2000s, but then declined due to the financial crisis. 
In 2005 the Spanish government legalized same-sex marriage, becoming the third country worldwide to do so. Decentralization was supported with much resistance of constitutional court, and conservative opposition, so did gender politics like quotas or the law against gender violence. Government talks with ETA happened, and the group announced its permanent cease of violence in 2010. The bursting of the Spanish property bubble in 2008 led to the 2008 16 Spanish financial crisis. High levels of unemployment, cuts in government spending, and corruption in royal family and people's party served as a backdrop to the 2011 12 Spanish protests. Catalan independentism also rose. In 2011, Mariano Rajoy's Conservative People's Party won the election with 44.6% of votes. As Prime Minister, he continued to implement austerity measures required by the EU Stability and Growth Pact. On 19 June 2014, the monarch, Juan Carlos, abdicated in favor of his son, who became Felipe VI. A Catalan independence referendum was held on 1 October 2017 and then, on 27 October, the Catalan Parliament voted to unilaterally declare independence from Spain to form a Catalan Republic on the day the Spanish Senate, was discussing approving direct rule over Catalonia as called for by the Spanish Prime Minister. Later that day the Senate granted the power to impose direct rule and Mr Rajoy dissolved, the Catalan Parliament and called a new election. No country recognized Catalonia as a separate state. On 1 June 2018, the Congress of Deputies passed a motion of no confidence against Rajoy and replaced him with the sole leader Pedro Sanchez. On 31 January 2020, the COVID 19 virus was confirmed to have spread to Spain, where it has caused as of June 2021 more than 80,000 deaths, causing life expectancy to drop by more than one year. On 18 March 2021, Spain became the sixth nation in the world to make active euthanasia legal. Chapter 3, Geography At 505,992 square kilometers, Spain is the world's 52nd largest country and Europe's fourth largest country. It is some 47,000 square kilometers, smaller than France. Mount Tede is the highest mountain peak in Spain and is the third largest volcano in the world from its base. Spain is a transcontinental country, having territory in both Europe and Africa. Spain lies between latitudes 27 degrees and 44 degrees north, and longitudes 19 degrees west and 5 degrees east. On the west, Spain is bordered by Portugal, on the south, it is bordered by Gibraltar and Morocco, through its exclaves in North Africa. On the northeast, along the Pyrenees mountain range, it is bordered by France and Andorra. Along the Pyrenees in Girona, a small exclave town called Livia, is surrounded by France. Extending to 1,214 kilometers, the Portugal-Spain border is the longest uninterrupted border within the European Union. Chapter 3 Section 1, Islands Spain also includes the Balearic Islands in the Mediterranean Sea, the Canary Islands in the Atlantic Ocean and a number of uninhabited islands on the Mediterranean side of the Strait of Gibraltar, known as Plazas de Soberania, such as the Chafarinas Islands and Aljusmas. The peninsula of de Vélez de la Gomera is also regarded as a Plaza de Soberania. The Isle of Albaran, located in the Mediterranean between Spain and North Africa, is also administered by Spain, specifically by the municipality of Almeria, Andalusia. The little pheasant island in the river Bidasoa is a Spanish-French condominium. There are 11 major islands in Spain, all of them having their own governing bodies. These islands are specifically mentioned by the Spanish constitution, when fixing its senatorial representation. These islands are. Chapter 3 Section 2 mountains and rivers. Mainland Spain is a mountainous country, dominated by high plateaus and mountain chains. After the Pyrenees, the main mountain ranges are the Cordillera Cantabrica, Sistema Ibérico, Sistema Central, Montes de Toledo, Sierra Morena and the Sistema Bitico whose highest peak, 
the 3,478-metre-high Mulhassan, located in Sierra Nevada, is the highest elevation in the Iberian Peninsula. The highest point in Spain is the Teide, a 3,718-metre active volcano in the Canary Islands. The Meseta Central is a vast plateau in the heart of peninsular Spain. There are several major rivers in Spain such as the Togas, Ebro, Guadiana, Duro, Guadalquivir, Jucar, Segura, Turia and Minho. Alluvial plains are found along the coast, the largest of which is that of the Guadalquivir in Andalusia. Chapter 3 Section 3 Climate Three main climatic zones can be separated, according to geographical situation and orographic conditions. The Mediterranean climate, characterized by warm-slash-hot and dry summers, is dominant in the peninsula. It has two varieties, XA and CSB according to the Kirpan climate classification. The XA zone is associated to areas with hot summers. It is predominant in the Mediterranean, and southern Atlantic coast and inland throughout Andalusia, Extremadura and much, if not most, of the center of the country. The XA zone covers climatic zones with both relatively warm and cold winters which are considered extremely different from each other at a local level, reason for which Kirpan classification is often stewed within Spain. Local climatic maps generally divide the Mediterranean zone between warm winter and cold winter zones, rather than according to summer temperatures. The CSB zone has warm rather than hot summers, and extends to additional cool winter areas not typically associated with a Mediterranean climate, such as much of central and northern central of Spain, and into much rainier areas. Note areas with relatively high rainfall such as Galicia are not considered Mediterranean under local classifications, but classed as oceanic. The semi-arid climate, is predominant in the southeastern quarter of the country, but is also widespread in other areas of Spain. It covers most of the region of Murcia, southern Valencia and eastern Andalusia, where true hot desert climates also exist. Further to the north, it is predominant in the upper and mid-reaches of the Ebro Valley, which crosses southern Navarre, central Aragon and western Catalonia. It also is found in Madrid, Extremadura, Castilla-La Mancha, and some locations of western Andalusia. The dry season extends beyond the summer and average temperature depends on altitude and latitude. The oceanic climate, located in the northern quarter of the country, especially in the Atlantic region. Additionally it is also found in northern Navarre, in most highlands areas along the Iberian system, and in the Pyrenean valleys, where a humid subtropical variant also occurs. Winter and summer temperatures are influenced by the ocean, and have no seasonal drought dot apart from these main types, other subtypes can be found, like the alpine climate in areas with very high altitude, the humid subtropical climate in areas of northeastern Spain and the continental climates in the Pyrenees as well as parts of the Cantabrian range, the central system, Sierra Nevada and the Iberian system, and a typical desert climate in the zone of Almeria, Murcia and eastern Canary Islands. Low-lying areas of the Canary Islands average above 18.0 degrees Celsius during their coldest month, thus having a tropical climate. Chapter 3 Section 4 Fauna and Flora The fauna presents a wide diversity that is due in large part to the geographical position of the Iberian Peninsula between the Atlantic and the Mediterranean, and between Africa and Eurasia, and the great diversity of habitats and biotopes, the result of a considerable variety of climates and well differentiated regions. The vegetation of Spain is varied due to several factors, including the diversity of the terrain the climate and latitude. Spain includes different phytogeographic regions, each with its own floral characteristics resulting largely from the interaction of climate, topography, soil type and fire, and biotic factors. The country had a 2019 Forest Landscape Integrity Index mean score of 4. 23 tenths, ranking it 130th globally out of 172 countries. Chapter 3 Section 5, Government Spain is a constitutional monarchy, with a hereditary monarch and a bicameral parliament, the Cortes Generales. 
The legislative branch is made up of the Congress of Deputies, a lower house with 350 members, elected by popular vote on block lists by proportional representation to serve four-year terms, and the Senate, an upper house with 259 seats of which 208 are directly elected by popular vote, using a limited voting method, and the other 51 appointed by the regional legislatures to also serve four-year terms. The executive branch consists of a council of ministers presided over by the prime minister, who is nominated as candidate by the monarch after holding consultations with representatives from the different parliamentary groups, voted in by the members of the lower house during an investiture session and then formally appointed by the monarch. Head of State Felipe VI, since the 19th of June 2014. Government Prime Minister or President of the Government, Pedro Sanchez Perez Costajón, elected 1 June 2018. Deputy Prime Ministers, currently Nadia Calvino Santa Maria, Yolanda Diaz Perez, Teresa Rivera Rodriguez. Ministers, Second Government of Pedro Sanchez. The Prime Minister, Deputy Prime Ministers, and the rest of Ministers convene at the Council of Ministers. Spain is organizationally structured as a so-called Estado de las Autonomías, it is one of the most decentralized countries in Europe, along with Switzerland, Germany and Belgium, for example, all autonomous communities have their own elected parliaments, governments, public administrations, budgets, and resources. Health and education systems among others are managed by the Spanish communities, and in addition, the Basque Country and Navarre also manage their own public finances based on Feral provisions. In Catalonia, the Basque Country, Navarre and the Canary Islands, a full-fledged autonomous police corps replaces some of the state police functions. Chapter 3 Section 6 – Foreign Relations After the return of democracy following the death of Franco in 1975, Spain's foreign policy priorities were to break out of the diplomatic isolation of the Franco years and expand diplomatic relations, enter the European community, and define security relations with the West. As a member of NATO since 1982, Spain has established itself as a participant in multilateral international security activities. Spain's EU membership represents an important part of its foreign policy. Even on many international issues beyond Western Europe, Spain prefers to coordinate its efforts with its EU partners through the European political cooperation mechanisms. Spain has maintained its special relations with Hispanic America and the Philippines. Its policy emphasizes the concept of an Ibero American community, essentially the renewal of the concept of Hispanidad or Hispanismo, as it is often referred to in English which has sought to link the Iberian Peninsula with Hispanic America through language, commerce, history and culture. It is fundamentally based on shared values and the recovery of democracy. Territorial disputes Spain claims Gibraltar, a six-square-kilometer overseas territory of the United Kingdom, in the southernmost part of the Iberian Peninsula. Then a Spanish town, it was conquered by an Anglo-Dutch force in 1704 during the War of the Spanish Succession on behalf of Archduke Charles, pretender to the Spanish throne. The legal situation concerning Gibraltar was settled in 1713 by the Treaty of Utrecht, in which Spain ceded the territory in perpetuity to the British Crown stating that, should the British abandon this post, it would be offered to Spain first. Since the 1940s, Spain has called for the return of Gibraltar. The overwhelming majority of Gibraltarians strongly oppose this, along with any proposal of shared sovereignty. UN resolutions call on the United Kingdom and Spain to reach an agreement over the status of Gibraltar. The Spanish claim makes a distinction between the isthmus that connects the rock to the Spanish mainland on the one hand, and the rock and city of Gibraltar on the other. While the rock and city were ceded by the Treaty of Utrecht, Spain asserts that the occupation of the isthmus is illegal and against the principles of international law. The United Kingdom relies on de facto arguments of possession by prescription in relation to the isthmus, as there has been continuous possession over a long period. Another claim by Spain is about the Savage Islands, part of Portugal. In clash with the Portuguese position, Spain claims that they are rocks rather than islands, 
and therefore Spain does not accept any extension of the Portuguese exclusive economic zone generated by the islands, while acknowledging the Sevagenche having territorial waters. On 5 July 2013, Spain sent a letter to the UN expressing these views. Spain claims the sovereignty over the Perihel Island, a small, uninhabited rocky islet located in the south shore of the Strait of Gibraltar. The island lies 250 metres just off the coast of Morocco, 8 kilometres from Ceuta and 13.5 kilometres from mainland Spain. Its sovereignty is disputed between Spain and Morocco. It was the subject of an armed incident between the two countries in 2002. The incident ended when both countries agreed to return to the status quo ante which existed prior to the Moroccan occupation of the island. The islet is now deserted, and without any sign of sovereignty. Besides the Perihel Island, the Spanish-held territories claimed by other countries are too. Morocco claims the Spanish cities of Ceuta and Melilla, and the plazas de Soberania islets off the northern coast of Africa. Portugal does not recognize Spain's sovereignty over the territory of Olivença which was annexed by Spain in 1801 after the War of the Oranges. Portugal's stance has been the territory being de jure Portuguese territory, and de facto Spanish. Chapter 3 Section 7 Military The armed forces of Spain are known as the Spanish Armed Forces. Their commander-in-chief is the King of Spain, Felipe VI. The next military authorities in line are the Prime Minister and the Minister of Defense. The fourth military authority of the state is the Chief of the Defense Staff. The Defense Staff assists the Jimad as auxiliary body. The Spanish Armed Forces are divided into three branches. Army Navy Air Force military conscription was suppressed in 2001. Chapter 3 Section 8 Human Rights The Spanish Constitution of 1978 protect all Spaniards and all the peoples of Spain in the exercise of human rights, their cultures and traditions, languages and institutions. According to Amnesty International, government investigations of alleged police abuses are often lengthy and punishments were light. Violence against women was a problem which the government took steps to address. Spain provides one of the highest degrees of liberty in the world for its LGBT community. Among the countries studied by Pew Research Center in 2013, Spain is rated first in acceptance of homosexuality, with 88% of those surveyed saying that homosexuality should be accepted. Chapter 3 Section 9 Administrative Divisions the Spanish state is divided into 17 autonomous communities and two autonomous cities, both groups being the highest or first order administrative division in the country. Autonomous communities are divided into provinces, of which there are 50 in total, and in turn, provinces are divided into municipalities. In Catalonia, two additional divisions exist, the Comarques and the Vigaries both of which have administrative powers, Comarques being aggregations of municipalities, and the Vigaries being aggregations of Comarques. The concept of a Comarca exists in all autonomous communities, however, unlike Catalonia, these are merely historical or geographical subdivisions. Chapter 3 Section 9 Subsection 2 Autonomous Communities Spain's autonomous communities are the first level administrative divisions of the country. They were created after the current constitution came into effect in recognition of the right to self-government of the nationalities and regions of Spain. The autonomous communities were to comprise adjacent provinces with common historical, cultural, and economic traits. This territorial organization, based on devolution, is known in Spain as the state of autonomies. The basic institutional law of each autonomous community, is the statute of autonomy. The statutes of autonomy establish the name of the community according to its historical and contemporary identity, the limits of its territories, the name and organization of the institutions of government and the rights they enjoy according to the constitution. The governments of all autonomous communities must be based on a division of powers and comprise 
a legislative assembly whose members must be elected by universal suffrage according to the system of proportional representation and in which all areas that integrate the territory are fairly represented. A government council, with executive and administrative functions headed by a president, elected by the legislative assembly and nominated by the King of Spain. A Supreme Court, under the Supreme Court of Spain, which heads the judiciary in the autonomous community. Catalonia, Galicia and the Basque Country, which identified themselves as nationalities, were granted self-government through a rapid process. Andalusia also took that denomination in its first statute of autonomy, even though it followed the longer process stipulated in the constitution for the rest of the country. Progressively, other communities in revisions to their statutes of autonomy have also taken that denomination in accordance to their historical and modern identities, such as the Valencian community, the Canary Islands, the Balearic Islands, and Aragon. The autonomous communities have wide legislative and executive autonomy, with their own parliaments and regional governments. The distribution of powers may be different for every community, as laid out in their statutes of autonomy since devolution was intended to be asymmetrical. Only two communities, the Basque Country and Navarre, have full fiscal autonomy. Beyond fiscal autonomy, the nationalities, Andalusia, the Basque Country, Catalonia, and Galicia, were devolved more powers than the rest of the communities, among them the ability of the regional president to dissolve the parliament and call for elections at any time. In addition, the Basque Country, Catalonia, and Navarre have police corps of their own, Ertzainza, Mossos d'Esquadra, and the Policia Feral respectively. Other communities have more limited forces or none at all, like the Policia Autonoma Andalusa in Andalusia, or the Biscam in Madrid. Nonetheless, recent amendments to existing statutes of autonomy or the promulgation of new statutes altogether, have reduced the asymmetry between the powers originally granted to the nationalities and the rest of the regions. Finally, along with the 17 autonomous communities, two autonomous cities are also part of the state of autonomies and are first-order territorial divisions, Ceuta and Malia. These are two exclaves located in the northern African coast. Chapter 3 Section 9 Subsection 3 Provinces and Municipalities Autonomous communities are divided into provinces, which served as their territorial building blocks. In turn, provinces are divided into municipalities. The existence of both the provinces and the municipalities is guaranteed and protected by the constitution, not necessarily by the statutes of autonomy themselves. Municipalities are granted autonomy to manage their internal affairs, and provinces are the territorial divisions designed to carry out the activities of the state. The current provincial division structure is based, with minor changes, on the 1833 territorial division by Javier de Burgos, and in all, the Spanish territory is divided into 50 provinces. The communities of Asturias, Cantabria, La Rioja, the Balearic Islands, Madrid, Murcia and Navarre are the only communities that comprise a single province, which is coextensive with the community itself. In these cases, the administrative institutions of the province are replaced by the governmental institutions of the community. Chapter 4 Economy Spain's capitalist mixed economy is the 14th largest worldwide and the 4th largest in the European Union, as well as the Eurozone's 4th largest. The centre-right government of former Prime Minister José María Osnar worked successfully to gain admission to the group of countries launching the euro in 1999. Unemployment stood at 17.1% in June 2017, below Spain's early 1990s unemployment rate of at over 20%. The youth unemployment rate is extremely high compared to EU standards. Perennial weak points of Spain's economy include a large informal economy, and an education system which OECD reports place among the poorest for developed countries, along with the United States. By the mid-1990s the economy had commenced the growth that had been disrupted by the global recession of the early 1990s. The strong economic growth helped the government to reduce the government debt as a percentage of GDP and Spain's high unemployment rate began to steadily decline. 
With the government budget in balance and inflation under control Spain was admitted into the Eurozone in 1999. Since the 1990s, some Spanish companies have gained multinational status, often expanding their activities in culturally close Latin America. Spain is the second biggest foreign investor there, after the United States. Spanish companies have also expanded into Asia, especially China and India. This early global expansion is a competitive advantage over its competitors and European neighbors. The reason for this early expansion is the booming interest towards Spanish language and culture in Asia and Africa and a corporate culture that learned to take risks in unstable markets. Spanish companies invested in fields like renewable energy commercialization, technology companies like Telefonica, Abengoa, Mondragon Corporation, Movistar, Istizat, Indra, train manufacturers like CF, Tolgo, global corporations such as the textile company Inditex, petroleum companies like Repsol or Kepsa and Infrastructure, with six of the ten biggest international construction firms specializing in transport being Spanish, like Ferroviol, Oxiona, ACS, OHL, and FCC. In 2005, the Economist Intelligence Unit's Quality of Life Survey placed Spain among the top ten in the world. In 2013, the same survey ranked Spain 28th in the world. In 2010, the Basque city of Bilbao was awarded with the Lee Kuan Yew World City Prize, and its mayor at the time, Iñaki Azcuna, was awarded the World Mayor Prize in 2012. The Basque capital city of Vitoria Gasteiz received the European Green Capital Award in 2012. Chapter 4 Section 1 Automotive Industry The automotive industry is one of the largest employers in the country. In 2015, Spain was the eighth largest automobile producer country in the world and the second largest car manufacturer in Europe after Germany. By 2016, the automotive industry was generating 8.7% of Spain's gross domestic product, employing about 9% of the manufacturing industry. By 2008 the automobile industry was the second most exported industry while in 2015 about 80% of the total production was for export. German companies poured 4.8 billion euros into Spain in 2015 making the country the second largest destination for German foreign direct investment behind only the US. The lion's share of that investment, 4 billion euros, went to the country's auto industry. Chapter 4 Section 2 Agriculture Crop areas were farmed in two highly diverse manners. Areas relying on non-irrigated cultivation, which made up 85% of the entire crop area, depended solely on rainfall as a source of water. They included the humid regions of the north and the northwest, as well as vast arid zones that had not been irrigated. The much more productive regions devoted to irrigated cultivation accounted for 3 million hectares in 1986, and the government hoped that this area would eventually double, as it already had doubled since 1950. Particularly noteworthy was the development in Almeria, one of the most arid and desolate provinces of Spain, of winter crops of various fruits and vegetables for export to Europe. Though only about 17% of Spain's cultivated land was irrigated, it was estimated to be the source of between 40 and 45% of the gross value of crop production and of 50% of the value of agricultural exports. More than half of the irrigated area was planted in corn, fruit, trees, and vegetables. Other agricultural products that benefited from irrigation included grapes, cotton, sugar beets, potatoes, legumes, olive trees, mangoes, strawberries, tomatoes, and fodder grasses. Depending on the nature of the crop, it was possible to harvest two successive crops in the same year on about 10% of the country's irrigated land. Citrus fruits, vegetables, cereal grains, olive oil, and wine, Spain's traditional agricultural products, continued to be important in the 1980s. In 1983 they represented 12%, 12%, 8%, 6%, and 4%, respectively, of the country's agricultural production. Because of the changed diet of an increasingly affluent population, there was a notable increase in the consumption of livestock, poultry, and dairy products. 
meat production for domestic consumption became the single most important agricultural activity, accounting for 30% of all farm-related production in 1983. Increased attention to livestock was the reason that Spain became a net importer of grains. Ideal growing conditions, combined with proximity to important North European markets, made citrus fruits Spain's leading export. Fresh vegetables and fruits produced through intensive irrigation farming also became important export commodities, as did sunflower seed oil that was produced to compete with the more expensive olive oils in oversupply throughout the Mediterranean countries of the European community. Chapter 4 Section 3 – Tourism In 2017, Spain was the second most visited country in the world, recording 82 million tourists which marked the fifth consecutive year of record-beating numbers. The headquarters of the World Tourism Organization are located in Madrid. Spain's geographic location, popular coastlines, diverse landscapes, historical legacy, vibrant culture, and excellent infrastructure has made the country's international tourist industry among the largest in the world. In the last five decades, International tourism in Spain has grown to become the second largest in the world in terms of spending, worth approximately 40 billion euros or about 5% of GDP in 2006. Castile and Leon is the Spanish leader in rural tourism linked to its environmental and architectural heritage. Chapter 4 Section 4 Energy in 2010 Spain became the solar power world leader when it overtook the United States with a massive power station plant called La Florida, near Alvarado, Badajoz. Spain is also Europe's main producer of wind energy. In 2010 its wind turbines generated 42,976 gigawatt-hours, which accounted for 16.4% of all electrical energy produced in Spain. On 9 November 2010, Wind energy reached an instantaneous historic peak covering 53% of mainland electricity demand and generating an amount of energy that is equivalent to that of 14 nuclear reactors. Other renewable energies used in Spain are hydroelectric, biomass and marine. Non-renewable energy sources used in Spain are nuclear, gas, coal, and oil. Fossil fuels together generated 58% of Spain's electricity in 2009, just below the OECD mean of 61%. Nuclear power generated another 19%, and wind and hydro about 12% each. Chapter 4 Section 5 – Transport The Spanish road system is mainly centralized, with six highways connecting Madrid to the Basque Country, Catalonia, Valencia, West Andalusia, Extremadura, and Galicia. Additionally, there are highways along the Atlantic, Cantabrian, and Mediterranean coasts. Spain aims to put 1 million electric cars on the road by 2014 as part of the government's plan to save energy and boost energy efficiency. The former Minister of Industry Miguel Sebastian said that the electric vehicle is the future and the engine of an industrial revolution. Spain has the most extensive high-speed rail network in Europe, and the second most extensive in the world after China. As of 2019, Spain has a total of over 3,400 kilometers of high-speed tracks linking Malaga, Seville, Madrid, Barcelona, Valencia, and Valladolid, with the trains operated at commercial speeds up to 310 kilometers per hour. On average, the Spanish high-speed train is the fastest one in the world, followed by the Japanese bullet train and the French TGV. Regarding punctuality, it is second in the world after the Japanese Shinkansen. Should the aims of the ambitious of program be met, by 2020 Spain will have 7,000 kilometers of high-speed trains linking almost all provincial cities to Madrid in less than three hours and Barcelona within four hours. There are 47 public airports in Spain. The busiest one is the airport of Madrid, with 50 million passengers in 2011, being the world's 15th busiest airport, as well as the European Union's fourth busiest. The airport of Barcelona is also important, with 35 million passengers in 2011, being the world's 31st busiest airport. Other main airports are located in Mallorca, Malaga, 
Las Palmas, Alicante and smaller, with the number of passengers between 4 and 10 million, for example Tenerife, Valencia, Seville, Bilbao, Ibiza, Lanzarote, Fuerteventura. Also, more than 30 airports with the number of passengers below 4 million. Chapter 4 Section 6, Science and Technology In the 19th and 20th centuries, science in Spain was held back by severe political instability and consequent economic underdevelopment. Despite the conditions, some important scientists and engineers emerged. The most notable were Miguel Servit, Santiago Ramón y Cajal, Narcis Monturiel, Celedonio Calateod, Juan de la Sierva, Leonardo Torres y Quevedo, Margarita Salas, and Severo Ochoa. The Consejo Superior de Investigaciones Científicas is the leading public agency dedicated to scientific research in the country. It ranked as the fifth top governmental scientific institution worldwide in the 2018 SE Mago Institutions Rankings. Spain was ranked 30th in the Global Innovation Index in 2020, down from 29th in 2019. Since 2006, the Mobile World Congress has taken place in Barcelona. Chapter 5 Demographics In 2019, the population of Spain officially reached 47 million people, as recorded by the Padron Municipal. Spain's population density, at 91 slash km2, is lower than that of most Western European countries and its distribution across the country is very unequal. With the exception of the region surrounding the capital, Madrid, the most populated areas lie around the coast. The population of Spain has risen two and a half times since 1900, when it stood at 18.6 million, principally due to the spectacular demographic boom in the 1960s and early 1970s. In 2017, the average total fertility rate across Spain was 1.33 children born per woman, one of the lowest in the world, below the replacement rate of 2.1, it remains considerably below the high of 5.11 children born per woman in 1865. Spain subsequently has one of the oldest populations in the world, with the average age of 43.1 years. Native Spaniards make up 88% of the total population of Spain. After the birth rate plunged in the 1980s and Spain's population growth rate dropped, the population again trended upward initially upon the return of many Spaniards who had emigrated to other European countries during the 1970s, and more recently, fueled by large numbers of immigrants who make up 12% of the population. The immigrants originate mainly in Latin America, North Africa, Eastern Europe, and Sub-Saharan Africa. In 2005, Spain instituted a three-month amnesty program through which certain hitherto undocumented aliens were granted legal residency. In 2008, Spain granted citizenship to 84,170 persons, mostly to people from Ecuador, Colombia, and Morocco. A sizable portion of foreign residents in Spain also comes from other Western and Central European countries. These are mostly British, French, German, Dutch and Norwegian. They reside primarily on the Mediterranean coast and the Balearic Islands, where many choose to live their retirement or telecommute. Substantial populations descended from Spanish colonists and immigrants exist in other parts of the world, most notably, in Latin America. Beginning in the late 15th century, large numbers of Iberian colonists settled in what became Latin America, and at present most white Latin Americans are of Spanish or Portuguese origin. Around 240,000 Spaniards emigrated in the 16th century, mostly to Mexico. Another 450,000 left in the 17th century. The estimate between 1492 and 1832 is 1.86 million. Between 1846 and 1932 it is estimated that nearly 5 million Spaniards emigrated to the Americas, especially to Argentina, and Brazil. Approximately 2 million Spaniards migrated to other Western European countries between 1960 and 1975. During the same period perhaps 300,000 went to Latin America. Chapter 5 Section 1 Urbanization Metropolitan Areas Source, 
Areas Urbanas Plus 50, Ministry of Public Works and Transport. Chapter 5 Section 2, Peoples. The Spanish Constitution of 1978, in its second article, generically recognizes contemporary entities, nationalities and regions, within the context of the Spanish nation. Spain has been described as a de facto plurinational state. The identity of Spain rather accrues of an overlap of different territorial and ethno-linguistic identities than of a sole Spanish identity. In some cases some of the territorial identities may conflict with the dominant Spanish culture. Distinct traditional identities within Spain include the Basques, Catalans, Galicians and Alusians, and Valencians, although to some extent all of the 17 autonomous communities may claim a distinct local identity. It is this last feature of shared identity between the more local level or autonomous community, and the Spanish level which makes the identity question in Spain complex and far from univocal. Chapter 5 Section 3 Minority Groups Spain has a number of descendants of populations from former colonies, especially Latin America and North Africa. Smaller numbers of immigrants from several sub-Saharan countries have recently been settling in Spain. There are also sizable numbers of Asian immigrants, most of whom are of Middle Eastern, South Asian and Chinese origin. The single largest group of immigrants are European, represented by large numbers of Romanians, Britons, Germans, French and others. The arrival of the Gitanos, a Romani people, began in the 16th century, Estimates of the Spanish Roma population range from 750,000 to over 1 million. There are also the Mercheros, a formerly nomadic minority group. Their origin is unclear. Historically, Sephardi Jews and Moriscos are the main minority groups originating in Spain and with a contribution to Spanish culture. The Spanish government is offering Spanish nationality to Sephardi Jews. Chapter 5 Section 4, Immigration According to the official Spanish statistics there were 5.4 million foreign residents in Spain in 2020 while all citizens born outside of Spain were 7.2 million in 2020, 15.23% of the total population. According to residence permit data for 2011, more than 860,000 were Romanian, about 770,000 were Moroccan, approximately 390,000 were British, and 360,000 were Ecuadorian. Other sizable foreign communities are Colombian, Bolivian, German, Italian, Bulgarian, and Chinese. There are more than 200,000 migrants from Sub-Saharan Africa living in Spain, principally Senegalese's and Nigerians. Since 2000, Spain has experienced high population growth as a result of immigration flows, despite a birth rate that is only half the replacement level. This sudden and ongoing inflow of immigrants, particularly those arriving illegally by sea, has caused noticeable social tension. Within the EU, Spain had the second highest immigration rate in percentage terms after Cyprus, but by a great margin, the highest in absolute numbers, up to 2008. The number of immigrants in Spain had grown up from 500,000 people in 1996 to 5.2 million in 2000, and 8 out of a total population of 46 million. In 2005 alone, a regularization program increased the legal immigrant population by 700,000 people. There are a number of reasons for the high level of immigration, including Spain's cultural ties with Latin America, its geographical position, the porosity of its borders, the large size of its underground economy and the strength of the agricultural and construction sectors, which demand more low-cost labor than can be offered by the national workforce. Another statistically significant factor is the large number of residents of EU origin typically retiring to Spain's Mediterranean coast. In fact, Spain was Europe's largest absorber of migrants from 2002 to 2007, with its immigrant population more than doubling as 2.5 million people arrived. In 2008, prior to the onset of the economic crisis, the Financial Times reported that Spain was the most favored destination for Western Europeans considering a move from their own country and seeking jobs elsewhere in the EU. In 2008, 
the government instituted a plan of voluntary return which encouraged unemployed immigrants from outside the EU to return to their home countries and receive several incentives, including the right to keep their unemployment benefits and transfer whatever they contributed to the Spanish social security. The program had little effect, during its first two months, just 1,400 immigrants took up the offer. What the program failed to do, the sharp and prolonged economic crisis has done from 2010 to 2011 in that tens of thousands of immigrants have left the country due to lack of jobs. In 2011 alone, more than half a million people left Spain. For the first time in decades the net migration rate was expected to be negative, and 9 out of 10 immigrants were foreigners. Chapter 5 Section 5, Languages Spain is a multilingual state. Spanish, featured in the 1978 Spanish constitution as Castellano, has effectively been the official language of the entire country since 1931. As allowed in the third article of the constitution, the other Spanish languages can also become official in their respective autonomous communities. The territoriality created by the form of co-officiality codified in the 1978 constitution creates an asymmetry, in which Spanish speakers' rights apply to the entire territory whereas vis-à-vis the rest of co-official languages, their speakers' rights only apply in their territories. Besides Spanish, other territorialized languages include Aragonese, Aranese, Astelianese, Basque, Sutan Arabic, Catalan, Galician, Portuguese, and Tamazight to which the Romani Calo and the sign languages may add up. The number of speakers varies widely and their legal recognition is uneven, with some of the most vulnerable languages lacking any sort of effective protection. Those enjoying recognition as official language in some autonomous communities include Catalan, Galician, Basque, and Aranese in Catalonia. Spanish is natively spoken by 74%, Catalan by 17%, Galician by 7% and Basque by 2% of the Spanish population. Some of the most spoken foreign languages used by the immigrant communities include Moroccan Arabic, Romanian, and English. Chapter 5 Section 6 Education State education in Spain is free and compulsory from the age of 6 to 16. The current education system is regulated by the 2006 Educational Law, Low, or fundamental law for the education. In 2014, the law was partially modified by the newer and controversial Loam's Law, or fundamental law for the improvement of the education system, commonly called Ley Wert. Since 1970 to 2014, Spain has had seven different educational laws. The levels of education are preschool education, primary education, secondary education and post-16 education. In regards to the professional development education or the vocational education, there are three levels besides the university degrees, the Formación Profesional Básica, the Ciclo Formativo de Grado Medio or CFGM, which can be studied after studying the secondary education, and the Ciclo Formativo de Grado Superior or CFGS which can be studied after studying the post-16 education level. The Programme for International Student Assessment coordinated by the OECD currently ranks the overall knowledge and skills of Spanish 15-year-olds as significantly below the OECD average of 493 in reading literacy, mathematics, and science. Chapter 5 Section 7 Health The health care system of Spain is considered one of the best in the world, in seventh position in the ranking elaborated by the World Health Organization. The health care is public, universal and free for any legal citizen of Spain. The total health spending is 9.4% of the GDP, slightly above the average of 9.3% of the OECD. Chapter 5 Section 8, Religion Roman Catholicism, which has a long history in Spain, remains the dominant religion. Although it no longer has official status by law, in all public schools in Spain students have to choose either a religion or ethics class. Catholicism is the religion most commonly taught, although the teaching of Islam, Judaism, and Evangelical Christianity is also recognized in law. According to a 2020 study by the Spanish Center for Sociological Research, about 61% of Spaniards self-identify as Catholics, 
3% other faiths, and about 35% identify with no religion. Most Spaniards do not participate regularly in religious services. A 2019 study shows that of the Spaniards who identify themselves as religious, 62% hardly ever or never go to church, 16% go to church sometimes a year, 7% sometime per month and 13% every Sunday or multiple times per week. Recent polls and surveys suggest that around 30% of the Spanish population is irreligious. The Spanish constitution enshrines secularism in governance, as well as freedom of religion or belief for all, saying that no religion should have a state character, while allowing for the state to cooperate with religious groups. There have been four Spanish popes. Damasus I, Calixtus III, Alexander VI and Benedict XIII. Spanish mysticism provided an important intellectual resource against Protestantism with Carmelites like Teresa of Avila, a reformist nun and John of the Cross, a priest, taking the lead in their reform movement. Later, they became doctors of the Church. The Society of Jesus was co-founded by Ignatius of Loyola, whose spiritual exercises and movement led to the establishment of hundreds of colleges and universities in the world, including 28 in the United States alone. The Society's co-founder, Francis Xavier, was a missionary who reached India, and later Japan. In the 1960s, Jesuits Pedro Arup and Ignacio Elicuria supported the movement of liberation theology. Protestant churches have about 1,200,000 members. There are about 105,000 Jehovah's Witnesses. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints has approximately 46,000 adherents in 133 congregations in all regions of the country and has a temple in the Maratalas district of Madrid. A study made by the Union of Islamic Communities of Spain demonstrated that there were more than 2,100,000 inhabitants of Muslim background living in Spain as of 2019, accounting for 4-5% of the total population of Spain. The vast majority was composed of immigrants, and descendants originating from the Maghreb and other African countries. More than 879,000 of them had Spanish nationality. The recent waves of immigration have also led to an increasing number of Hindus, Buddhists, Sikhs, and Muslims. After the Reconquista in 1492, Muslims did not live in Spain for centuries. Late 19th century colonial expansion in northwestern Africa gave a number of residents in Spanish Morocco and Western Sahara full citizenship. Their ranks have since been bolstered by recent immigration, especially from Morocco and Algeria. Judaism was practically non existent in Spain from the 1492 expulsion until the 19th century, when Jews were again permitted to enter the country. Currently, there are around 62,000 Jews in Spain, or 0.14% of the total population. Most are arrivals in the past century while some are descendants of earlier Spanish Jews. Approximately 80,000 Jews are thought to have lived in Spain prior to its expulsion. However the Jewish Encyclopedia states the number over 800,000 to be too large and 235,000 as too small, 165,000 is given as expelled as possibly too small in favor of 200,000, and the numbers of converts after the 1,391 pogroms as less. Other sources suggest 200,000 converts mostly after the pogroms of 1,391 and upwards of 100,000 expelled. Descendants of these Sephardic Jews expelled in 1492 are given Spanish nationality if they request it. Chapter 6, Culture Spain is a Western country. Almost every aspect of Spanish life is permeated by its Roman heritage, making Spain one of the major Latin countries of Europe. Spanish culture is marked by strong historic ties to Catholicism, which played a pivotal role in the country's formation and subsequent identity. Spanish art, architecture, cuisine, and music have been shaped by successive waves of foreign invaders, as well as by the country's Mediterranean climate, and geography. The centuries-long colonial era globalized Spanish language and culture, with Spain also absorbing the cultural and commercial products of its diverse empire. 
Chapter 6, Section 1, World Heritage Sites Spain has 47 World Heritage Sites. These include the landscape of Monte Perdido in the Pyrenees, which is shared with France, the prehistoric rock art sites of the Coa Valley and Sea de Verde, which is shared with Portugal, the heritage of Mercury, shared with Slovenia and the ancient and primeval beech forests, shared with other countries of Europe. In addition, Spain has also 14 intangible cultural heritage, or human treasures. Chapter 6, Section 2, Literature the earliest recorded examples of vernacular romance-based literature date from the same time and location, the rich mix of Muslim, Jewish, and Christian cultures in Muslim Spain, in which Maimonides, Averroes, and others worked, the Kajas. During the Reconquista, the epic poem Cantar de Mio Cid was written about a real man, his battles, conquests, and daily life. The Valencian chivalric romance Tiran Lo Blanche written in Valencian is also remarkable. Other major plays from the medieval times were Mesta de Jugleria, Mesta de Clicia, Coplos por la Morte de su Padre, or El Libro de Buenamor. During the Renaissance the major plays are La Celestina and El Lazario de Tormas, while many religious literature was created with poets as Luis de Leon, San Juan de la Cruz, Santa Teresa de Jesus, etc. The Baroque is the most important period for Spanish culture. We are in the times of the Spanish Empire. The famous Don Quixote de la Mancha by Miguel de Cervantes was written in this time. Other writers from the period are, Francisco de Quevedo, Lope de Viga, Calderón de la Barca or Tirso de Molina. During the Enlightenment we find names such as Leandro Fernández de Moratín, Benito Jerónimo Feiju, Gaspar Melchor de Jovellanos or Leandro Fernández de Moratín. During the Romantic period, José Zoyar created one of the most emblematic figures in European literature in Don Juan Tenorio. Other writers from this period are Gustavo Adolfo Becker, José de Esperanceda, Rosalia de Castro or Mariano José de Lara. Artists such as Benito Pérez Galdós, Emilia Pardo Bazán, Leopoldo Alas, Concepcion Arnal, Vicente Blasco Ibanez and Menendez Pelayo created realist artworks. Realism offered depictions of contemporary life and society as they were. In the spirit of general realism, realist authors opted for depictions of everyday and banal activities and experiences, instead of romanticized or stylized presentations. The group that has become known as the Generation of 1898 was marked by the destruction of Spain's fleet in Cuba by U.S. gunboats in 1898, which provoked a cultural crisis in Spain. The disaster of 1898 led established writers to seek practical political, economic, and social solutions in essays grouped under the literary heading of Regenerasianismo. For a group of younger writers, among them Miguel de Unamuno, Pio Barroa, and José Martínez Ruiz, the disaster and its cultural repercussions inspired a deeper, more radical literary shift that affected both form and content. These writers, along with Ramón del Valle Inclán, Antonio Machado, Ramiro de Maistu, and Angel Gonivet, came to be known as the Generation of 98. The Generation of 1914 or Novecentismo the next supposed generation of Spanish writers following those of 98 already calls into question the value of such terminology. By the year 1914, the year of the outbreak of the First World War and of the publication of the first major work of the generation's leading voice, José Ortega Gosset, a number of slightly younger writers had established their own place within the Spanish cultural field. Leading voices include the poet Juan Ramón Jiménez, the academics and essayists Ramon Menéndez Pidal, Gregorio Marañón, Manuel Azana, Maria Zambrano, Eugenie Dawes, Clara Compomor and Ortega Gossett, and the novelists Gabriel Miró, Ramon Pérez de Ajala, and Ramon Gómez de la Serna. While still driven by the national and existential questions that obsessed the writers of 98, they approached these topics with a greater sense of distance and objectivity. Salvador de Moderiaga, another prominent intellectual and writer, 
was one of the founders of the College of Europe and the composer of the Constitutive Manifest of the Liberal International. The generation of 1927, where poets Pedro Salinas, Jorge Guillén, Federico García Lorca, Vicente Alexandre, Damaso Alonso. All were scholars of their national literary heritage, again evidence of the impact of the calls of regenerationistas, and the generation of 1898 for Spanish intelligence to turn at least partially inwards. Spain's two most preeminent writers in the second half of the 20th century were the Nobel Prize in Literature laureate Comilo José Sela and Miguel de Libe from Generation of 36. Spain is one of the countries with the most laureates of the Nobel Prize in Literature, and including Latin American Nobel laureates, Spanish language literature ranks among the highest in numbers of laureates. The Spanish writers are, José Echigaray, Jacinto Benevente, Juan Ramón Jiménez, Vicente Alexandre, and Comilo José Sela. The Portuguese writer José Saramago, also awarded with the prize, lived for many years in Spain and spoke both Portuguese and Spanish. Saramago was also well known by his Iberist ideas. The generation of 50 are also known as the children of the Civil War. Rosa Chassel, Gloria Fuertes, Jamie Gilda Biedma, Juan Goitisolo, Carmen Martin Guete, Ana Maria Matut, Juan Mars, Blas Duatero, Gabriel Salea, Antonio Gamonida, Rafael Sanchez Ferlosio or Ignacio Aldicoa. Premio Planeta de Novela and Miguel de Cervantes Prize are the two main awards nowadays in Spanish literature. Chapter 6, Section 3, Philosophy Seneca was a philosopher residing in Spain during the time of the Roman Empire. During the period of Muslim rule in Al-Andalus, Muslim, Jewish and Christian philosophies flourished, including the works of such philosophers such as Ibn Arabi, Averroes, and Maimonides. In the Middle Ages, Ramon Lul flourished in Spain. Humanist Luis Vaves worked in Spain during the Renaissance, as did Francisco de Vitoria and Bartolome de las Casas. The Enlightenment in Spain arrived later and was less strong than in other European countries, but during the 19th century, liberal ideas arrived in Spanish society. At the end of the century, socialist and libertarian ideas also flourished with thinkers such as Francisco Pai e Margai, Ricardo Mella, and Francisco Ferraguardia. In the first half of the 20th century among the most prominent philosophers were Maria Zambrano, José Ortega Gossett, and Miguel de Unamuno. Contemporary philosophers include Fernando Sarvater, Adela Cortina, creator of the term Oporophobia. Chapter 6, Section 4, Art Artists from Spain have been highly influential in the development of various European and American artistic movements. Due to historical, geographical and generational diversity, Spanish art has known a great number of influences. The Mediterranean heritage with Greco-Roman and some Moorish and influences in Spain, especially in Andalusia, is still evident today. European influences include Italy, Germany, and France, especially during the Renaissance, Spanish Baroque and Neoclassical periods. There are many other autochthonous styles such as the pre-Romanesque art and architecture, Herian architecture or the Isabelline Gothic. During the Golden Age painters working in Spain included El Greco, José de Ribera, Bartolomé Esteban Murillo, and Francisco Soberan. Also in the Baroque period, Diego Velázquez created some of the most famous Spanish portraits, such as Las Meninos and Las Irlanderas. Francisco Goya painted during a historical period that includes the Spanish Independence War, the fights between liberals and absolutists, and the rise of contemporary nation states. Joaquin Sawyer is a well known modern Impressionist painter, and there are many important Spanish painters belonging to the modernism art movement, including Pablo Picasso, Salvador Dali, Juan Gris, and Juan Miro. Chapter 6, Section 5, Sculpture The Plateresque style extended from beginnings of the 16th century until the last third of the century and its stylistic influence pervaded the works of all great Spanish artists of the time. Alonso Beraguete is called the Prince of Spanish Sculpture. His main works were the upper stalls of the choir of the Cathedral of Toledo, 
the tomb of Cardinal Tavera in the same cathedral, and the altarpiece of the visitation in the church of Santa Ursula in the same locality. Other notable sculptors were Bartolome Ordones, Diego de Siloe, Juan de Juni and Damien Forment. There were two schools of special flair and talent, the Seville School, to which Juan Martinez Montañez belonged, whose most celebrated works are the crucifix in the Cathedral of Seville, another in Vargara, and a Saint John, and the Granada School, to which Alonso Cano belonged, to whom an Immaculate Conception and a Virgin of Rosary, are attributed. Other notable Andalusian Baroque sculptors were Pedro de Mena. Pedro Roldan and his daughter Luisa Roldan, Juan de Mesa and Pedro Duque Cornejo. In the 20th century the most important Spanish sculptors were Julio González, Pablo Gargallo, Eduardo Chilida, and Pablo Serrano. Chapter 6 Section 6 Cinema Spanish cinema has achieved major international success including Oscars for recent films such as Pan's Labyrinth and Volva. In the long history of Spanish cinema, the great filmmaker Luis Buñuel was the first to achieve world recognition, followed by Pedro Almodovar in the 1980s. Mario Camus and Pilar Miró worked together in Curo Jimenez. Spanish cinema has also seen international success over the years with films by directors like Segundo de Chimón, Florian Rey, Luis García Berlanga, Carlos Saura, Julio Medem, Isabel Couchet, Alejandro Amenabla, Ithia Bolliain and brothers David Trueba and Fernando Trueba. Actresses Sarah Montiel and Penelope Cruz or actor Antonio Banderas are among those who have become Hollywood stars. International film festivals of Valladolid and San Sebastian are the oldest and more relevant in Spain. Chapter 6, Section 7, Architecture Due to its historical and geographical diversity, Spanish architecture has drawn from a host of influences. An important provincial city founded by the Romans and with an extensive Roman-era infrastructure, Cordoba became the cultural capital, including fine Arabic-style architecture, during the time of the Islamic Umayyad dynasty. Later Arab-style architecture continued to be developed under successive Islamic dynasties, ending with the Nasrid, which built its famed palace complex in Granada. Simultaneously, the Christian kingdoms gradually emerged and developed their own styles, developing a pre-Romanesque style when for a while isolated from contemporary mainstream European architectural influences during the earlier Middle Ages, they later integrated the Romanesque and Gothic streams. There was then an extraordinary flowering of the Gothic style that resulted in numerous instances being built throughout the entire territory. The Mudijar style, from the 12th to 17th centuries, was developed by introducing Arab-style motifs, patterns and elements into European architecture. The arrival of modernism, in the academic arena produced much of the architecture of the 20th century. An influential style centered in Barcelona, known as modernism, produced a number of important architects, of which Gaudi is one. The international style was led by groups like Gatepack. Spain is currently experiencing a revolution in contemporary architecture and Spanish architects like Rafael Monio, Santiago Colatrava, Ricardo Bofill as well as many others have gained worldwide renown. Chapter 6, Section 8, Music and Dance Spanish music is often considered abroad to be synonymous with flamenco, a West Andalusian musical genre, which, contrary to popular belief, is not widespread outside that region. Various regional styles of folk music abound in Aragon, Catalonia, Valencia, Castile, the Basque Country, Galicia, Cantabria, and Asturias. Pop, rock, hip-hop and heavy metal are also popular. In the field of classical music, Spain has produced a number of noted composers such as Isaac Albéniz, Manuel de Falla and Enrique Granados and singers and performers such as Plácido Domingo, José Carreras, Montserrat Cabellia, Alicia de la Rocha, Alfredo Kraus, Pablo Casals, Ricardo Vines, José Iturbi, Pablo de Sarasate, Jordi Saval, and Teresa Baganza. In Spain there are over 40 professional orchestras, including the Orquesta Sinfónica de Barcelona, Orquesta Nacional de España and the Orquesta Sinfónica de Madrid. Major opera houses include the Teatro Real, the Gran Teatro del Liso, Teatro Ariaga, 
and the El Palau de Les Arts Reina Sofia. Thousands of music fans also travel to Spain each year for internationally recognized summer music festivals, Sona which often features the top up and coming pop and techno acts, and Benicosim which tends to feature alternative rock and dance acts. Both festivals mark Spain as an international music presence and reflect the tastes of young people in the country. Vitoria Gasteis Jazz Festival is one of the main ones in its genre. The most popular traditional musical instrument, the guitar, originated in Spain. Typical of the north are the traditional bagpipers or gaiteros, mainly in Asturias and Galicia. Chapter 6, Section 9, Cuisine Spanish cuisine consists of a great variety of dishes which stem from differences in geography, culture and climate. It is heavily influenced by seafood available from the waters that surround the country, and reflects the country's deep Mediterranean roots. Spain's extensive history with many cultural influences has led to a unique cuisine. In particular, three main divisions are easily identified. Mediterranean Spain, all such coastal regions, from Catalonia to Andalusia, heavy use of seafood, such as pesquito frito, several cold soups like gazpacho, and many rice-based dishes like paella from Valencia and arroz negra from Catalonia. In a Spain, Castile, hot, thick soups such as the bread and garlic-based Castilian soup, along with substantial stews, such as cocido madrileño. Food is traditionally conserved by salting, such as Spanish ham, or immersed in olive oil, such as manchego cheese. Atlantic Spain, the whole northern coast, including Asturian, Basque, Cantabrian and Galician cuisine, vegetable and fish-based stews like caldo gallego and marmitaco. Also, the lightly cured lake and ham. The best-known cuisine of the northern countries often rely on ocean seafood, as in the Basque-style cod, albacore or anchovy or the Galician octopus-based polvo of feira and shellfish dishes. Chapter 6, Section 10, Sport While varieties of football have been played in Spain as far back as Roman times, sport in Spain has been dominated by football since the early 20th century. Real Madrid CF and FC Barcelona, are two of the most successful football clubs in the world. The country's national football team won the UEFA European Football Championship in 1964, 2008 and 2012 and the FIFA World Cup in 2010, and is the first team ever to win three back-to-back -back major international tournaments. Basketball, tennis, cycling, handball, futsal, motorcycling and, lately, Formula One also can boast of Spanish champions. Today, Spain is a major world sports powerhouse, especially since the 1992 Summer Olympics and Paralympics that were hosted in Barcelona, which stimulated a great deal of interest in sports in the country. The tourism industry has led to an improvement in sports infrastructure, especially for water sports, golf and skiing. In their respective regions, the traditional games of Basque Pelota and Valencian Pelota both are popular. Chapter 6, Section 11, Public Holidays and Festivals Public holidays, celebrated in Spain include a mix of religious, national and local observances. Each municipality, is allowed to declare a maximum of 14 public holidays per year, up to nine of these are chosen by the national government and at least, two are chosen locally. Spain's national day is celebrated on the 12th of October, the anniversary of the discovery of America and commemorate Our Lady of the Pillar Feast, patroness of Aragon and throughout Spain. There are many festivals and festivities in Spain. Some of them are known worldwide, and millions of tourists from all over the world go to Spain annually to experience one of these festivals. One of the most famous is San Fermin, in Pamplona. While its most famous event is the Encero, or the Running of the Bulls, which happens at 8 a.m. from 7 to 14 July, the seven days long celebration involves many other traditional and folkloric events. The events were central to the plot of The Sun Also Rises, by Ernest Hemingway, which brought it to the general attention of English-speaking people. As the result, it has become one of the most internationally renowned fiestas in Spain, 
with over 1 million people attending every year. Other festivals include, La Tomatina Tomato Festival in Bunol, Valencia, the Carnivals in the Canary Islands, the Falls in Valencia, or the Holy Week in Andalusia and Castile and Leon. Chapter 6, Section 12, Works Cited Gates, David. The Spanish Ulcer, A History of the Peninsula War. De Capo Press. ISBN 978 0 